the biggest source of my anxiety wasn't my workload, my clients, or my deadlines. It was a single number in a little red bubble on my phone, 18,551. That's how many unread emails were rotting in my inbox. Each one was a potential missed opportunity, a scheduling disaster waiting to happen, or a question I just didn't have the energy to answer. It's not just me either. A Microsoft study found that the average professional spends 57% of their time just communicating, stuck in meetings, buried in chats, and dealing with that digital avalanche of email. That leaves less than half your time for the work you're actually supposed to be doing. That wasn't just a statistic for me, it was my reality. My calendar looked like a game of Tetris played by a hyperactive kid, and my inbox was a graveyard of good intentions. I was drowning. The usual advice was, hire an assistant. But that meant interviews, training, and a hefty salary for tasks that felt repeatable. So, I tried something different. I went on a mission to build my own assistant, one that ran on code, not coffee. This is how I fired my future assistant before I even hired them and replaced them with a system of AI tools that won back my time, my focus, and my sanity. The breaking point. It wasn't a slow decline into chaos. It was a single, spectacular failure. I was in the final stages of landing a career-defining project. The client sent an email with a few last questions and a request for a quick call the next afternoon. That email landed in my inbox at 9.04 a.m. It was immediately swallowed by a flood of newsletters, notifications, and a dozen other urgent but useless messages. I didn't see it until 10 p.m. that night. By then, it was too late. They thought I wasn't interested, and the opportunity vanished. My first dive into AI tools was overwhelming. There are hundreds of apps all claiming to be the ultimate productivity hack. I quickly figured out that there wasn't one magic app that would solve all my problems. Tools like Motion can act as an AI executive assistant by merging your calendar and tasks, but it can be pricey. Others like Time Hero are great for planning but can feel overly complex for one person. The secret, I realized, wasn't finding one perfect tool, but creating a stack of specialized tools that could work together. My first thought was the traditional one, I need a person for this. I started looking into hiring a virtual assistant. And yeah, the cost was a big deal, but honestly, the time it would take to train someone? That was even more daunting. I'd have to teach them my preferences, my priorities, the way I talk to people. And even then, a human assistant works set hours. They get sick. They take vacations. They make mistakes, just like I did when I missed that critical email. The problem wasn't just about needing another pair of hands, it was about creating a system that was relentless, consistent, and worked 24-7. That's when I turned to AI. And to be honest, I was skeptical. AI felt like a buzzword for tech giants, not for someone like me just trying to manage a messy inbox. Could a machine really understand the difference between a critical client request and a 20% off coupon? Could it handle the delicate dance of scheduling without the endless back and forth? It seemed unlikely but the pain I was in made me willing to try anything. I decided to treat it like an experiment. Could I, piece by piece, build a digital assistant that could actually handle the chaos of my professional life? The search for a solution. My journey didn't start with code. It started with a piece of paper. I wrote down every single admin task that ate up my day. The list was depressingly long, but two main culprits jumped out, calendar management and email processing. These weren't just line items, they were entire categories of work. For my calendar, I needed something that could do more than just send a booking link. I wanted an AI that could proactively find time, fix conflicts, and understand plain English. For example, I wanted to be able to say, find 45 minutes for me and Sarah to discuss the project next week, and have it be smart enough to check both our calendars, find a slot that worked for both of us, and send the invitation. For email, the problem was even bigger. I needed a tool that could do three things perfectly. First, it had to be a bouncer for my inbox, filtering out junk before I ever saw it. Second, I needed it to summarize those long, rambling email threads into a few key bullet points. And third, I wanted it to help me reply faster by drafting responses for me. My first dive into AI tools was overwhelming. There are hundreds of apps all claiming to be the ultimate productivity hack. I quickly figured out that there wasn't one magic app that would solve all my problems. Tools like Motion can act as an AI executive assistant by merging your calendar and tasks, but it can be pricey. Others like Time Hero are great for planning but can feel overly complex for one person. The secret, I realized, wasn't finding one perfect tool, but creating a stack of specialized tools that could work together. I decided to tackle the two biggest time sucks separately before trying to link them. 
The plan was simple, find the best AI for scheduling, find the best AI for email, and then make them talk. This was the blueprint for my new digital assistant. Automating the calendar, the scheduling savior. So, I started with my calendar chaos. The market is flooded with options, from simple booking links like Calendly to complex team schedulers like Clockwise. Clockwise is great for creating uninterrupted focus time, but it really only shines when your whole team is on it. As a one-man band at the time, I needed something that worked for me. After trying out a few, I landed on Reclaim.i. What really sold me on Reclaim was how it handled flexible time. It doesn't just jam rigid blocks into your calendar, it gets that your schedule needs to have some give. It works like a smart layer over your Google Calendar, automating all the tedious planning I used to do by hand. The setup was my first real aha. Moment with automation. I connected my Google Calendar and then started teaching it about my life. I created habits for things I wanted to protect, like my morning workout, deep work sessions, and even lunch. I told Reclaim how long each habit was and my ideal time for it. Instead of locking that time in stone, Reclaim schedules it as a flexible event. If an important meeting pops up during my deep work time, Reclaim automatically finds another open spot for that work block. No conflict, no manual rescheduling. That alone was a game changer. But the real power came from its task scheduling. I connected it to my to-do list app. Now, when I add a task with a deadline, I don't have to go hunting for a spot in my calendar. Reclaim does it for me, scanning my commitments and finding the best time to slot it in. The ultimate test, though, was scheduling with other people. Instead of those awful email chains, I started using Reclaim Smart Meetings. I'd tell it the name of the meeting, who needed to be there, how long it should be, and how important it was. Reclaim would then scan everyone's calendar and instantly book the best time for everyone. It's like having an assistant who can see everyone's availability and make a decision on the spot. It even adds buffer time between meetings to prevent burnout, something I always forgot to do myself. The before and after was night and day. Before, one client meeting could mean a full day of email tag. After Reclaim, the time it took dropped to basically zero. I'd just tell the AI what I needed, and a few minutes later, a calendar invite was on its way. This was my first huge win, and it freed up hours of my week almost overnight. Taming the inbox, the email exterminator. With my calendar under control, I turned to the bigger beast, my inbox. My goal was twofold. First, stop the bleeding by filtering out all the noise, and second, process the important stuff way more efficiently. I needed more than just another email app, I needed an intelligent bodyguard for my inbox. A lot of tools just focus on making you faster at email. Superhuman, for example, is famous for its speed and keyboard shortcuts. It's an amazing tool, but it's designed to help you be faster. I wanted a tool that would do the thinking for me. That's why I chose SaneBox. It's not a separate app you have to learn. It just works quietly in the background of your regular email client, like Gmail or Outlook, acting as an AI filter. When you set it up, it scans your email history to learn your habits, who you reply to, what you open right away, and what you ignore. Then, the magic happens. It creates a few new folders in your email, like at Sane Later, at Sane News, and at Sane Black Hole. From then on, only important emails hit your main inbox. Everything else, newsletters, promotions, notifications, gets automatically sorted into the right folder. Out of sight, out of mind. This one feature cut the emails hitting my main inbox by over 80%. Instantly. The at sane black hole folder is especially satisfying. When you get a persistent, annoying email, you just drag it in there, and you never hear from that sender again. It's a one-click unsubscribe for absolutely anything. But filtering is only half the job. Sane Box also helps you process what's left. The Sane Reminders feature is amazing for follow-ups. If I send an email and need a reply, I can BCC something like one week at SaneBox.com. If no one replies in a week, Sane Box puts that email right back at the top of my inbox. No more forgotten follow-ups. For all the filtered mail, Sane Box sends a daily digest that summarizes everything in at Sane later. You can quickly scan it and archive or delete messages right from that one email. It turned the chore of cleaning out my inbox into a quick, two-minute daily task. For the emails that did need a real response, I added a second tool. Modern email clients like Gmail and Outlook now have powerful AI built in. Gmail's Gemini and Outlook's Copilot can summarize long threads and, more importantly, draft context-aware replies. So now, when a complex client email landed, I could hit summarize to get the gist, then draft reply to get a solid starting point. 
This combination, sane box for filtering and AI for drafting, turned my inbox from a source of stress into a clean, manageable workspace. This two-pronged attack on my calendar and email completely changed my day. If this is making sense to you and you want me to go deeper into any of these tools, like a full breakdown of Reclaim or Sane Box, or how to connect them, let me know in the comments. And if you want more practical guides on using AI to get more done, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss what's next. What you tell me really helps me figure out what to cover next. The Custom Brain, Integrating It All Once I had my scheduling and email systems working, they were great, but they were in their own separate worlds. A real assistant connects the dots. The final step was to make these tools talk to each other to create a truly automated workflow. This is where platforms like Zapier or N8N come in. They are basically the digital duct tape of the internet, letting you connect apps that don't naturally speak to each other. I started with a simple but powerful workflow. The problem was that even with a clean inbox, a vital email could show up while I was in a long meeting. I wanted a system that would not just flag the email but actively block time in my calendar to deal with it. Using an automation platform, I set up a new rule. The trigger was new email and a specific Gmail label. I made a rule in Gmail to automatically tag any email from my top 5 clients with urgent client. Here's how the automation works. Trigger, a new email lands in the urgent client folder. Action 1, the email's content gets sent to an AI model with a simple prompt, create a concise task name under 10 words from this email. This turns a long email into a clean task like follow-up on Project Alpha proposal. Action 2, that task name is then sent to Reclaim.i with an instruction to schedule a 30-minute task with this name within the next 4 business hours. Now, when a priority client emails me, I don't even have to see it. Within minutes, the AI has read it, created a task, and blocked off the perfect 30-minute slot in my calendar for me to handle it. This shifted me from being reactive, always putting out fires, to being proactive, with my systems intelligently building my day for me. I built another one for meeting follow-ups. Trigger, a Google Calendar event ends. Filter, the workflow only continues if the event title includes the word client. Action, an AI drafter is prompted to create a follow-up email with the attendees' names and the meeting title. It drafts a simple, polite email, hi, attendee name, great connecting today to discuss, meeting title. I'll be in touch with the next steps shortly. Final action, this gets saved in my Gmail drafts folder, ready for me to give it a quick personal touch and hit send. This is where it all comes together. Each tool makes the others better, building a system that anticipates what I need and handles the admin work without me lifting a finger. It's the closest thing I've found to having a real assistant who can think and act for you. The reality check, limitations and lessons learned. Now, I don't want to make it sound like this was a seamless, push-button fix. Building an AI assistant isn't a perfect science, and you have to know the limitations. First, there's a training period, not just for the AI, but for you. SaneBox, for instance, takes a few days to really learn your email habits. During that time, you have to actively teach it by moving misplaced emails into the right folders. It's a small investment up front that pays off big time, but it's not instant. You have to be a patient teacher for your own AI. Second, you have to be smart about privacy and security. You're giving these tools access to your most sensitive data. Make sure you choose reputable companies with clear privacy policies. I spent a good amount of time reading their terms of service before I committed. Don't skip that step. Finally, and this is the most important part, AI is not a substitute for human judgment. It gets tripped up by deep nuance and complex emotions. It can draft a polite follow-up, but it can't replicate the genuine connection you build with a client. It can schedule a meeting, but it can't run the meeting for you. The biggest lesson I learned is that the goal isn't 100% automation. It's about automating the 80% of admin work that is repetitive and drains your energy, so you can pour your human energy into the 20% that requires creativity, strategy, and emotional intelligence. You still have to be the final checkpoint. You are the CEO of your AI assistant, not just a passive observer. The new normal, life after automation. Looking back at that inbox with 18,000 unread messages feels like looking at a picture of a different person. Today, my inbox is consistently near zero. My calendar is no longer a source of stress but a clear, intentional plan for my day, built by an intelligence that has my back. I'm no longer losing hours to scheduling and sorting emails. That time now goes into deep work, building client relationships, and, most importantly, having the mental space to think about the bigger picture.
this journey wasn't really about replacing a person with AI. It was about completely redesigning my relationship with work. It was about using technology to handle the tasks that exhaust us so we can focus on the work that actually fulfills us. The tools are here, they're accessible, and they're incredibly powerful. By combining smart scheduling, intelligent email filtering, and automated workflows, you can build a system that works for you, tirelessly, in the background. You can take back your time, slash your stress, and finally get out from under the digital avalanche. You can build your own AI assistant. And this is your first step.